Hello and welcome to this week's Warriors HQ, your official midweek show. Coming up on this week's show, we've got the Warrior Challenge between the backs and the forwards. We've got a quick fire quiz with Duncan Weir, and we speak to Doogie Hall after he announced he would be retiring from rugby at the end of the season. This week is the return of the Crossbar Challenge, with the backs taking on the forwards, and Connor Braid took on Fergus Scott at a Crossbar Challenge. Well, I decided uh, I can't kick because of my ankle. I'm going to throw. What's yeah. the technique? Uh, well, it's all become about the old biceps. You know? Glasgow Warriors have signed Scotland international lock Kieran Lowe from London Irish. The 24-year-old, who can also play in the back row, will join in the summer on a two-year deal subject to America. Off-flanker Hugh Blake has joined from Edinburgh Rugby until the end of the season. Glasgow Warriors will defend their Melrose Sevens title when they do battle on the borders next month after accepting their invitation to return to the competition as holders. On Saturday, the 11th of April, the Warriors will head to the Green Yards, joining fellow guest teams Wasps, Germany and Northwest University. The Warriors will take on Ulster on Saturday the 16th of May in the club's final Guinness Pro 12 match of the regular season. The game at Scotsdon will kick off at 3pm, with all the games on the final day kicking off simultaneously. Tickets are available now from GlasgowWarriors.org. Brainiest uh, Jerry Yanaya Tawa. Dimmest uh, Henry Pergos. Uh, Henry uh, is, is quite a, a kind of chirpy man, but he's he's kind of he's dim it as well. He's, he uses the same kind of banter every week, and it just gets boring at times. Worst fashion sense. Um, tough one. Glenn Bryce kind of wears like army camel stuff all the time, it's quite odd but it's not in a green colour, it's like bright orange and bright blue, blue and, and kind of white stuff, that's quite odd. Poser, um, again Henry Pargos, he's, he's uh, obviously coming to the club, he's, uh, he's quite a skinny young fella so now he's got a kind of wee bit of muscle bulk, he's, he's shown it off in the gym any kind of uh, opportunity he's got, he's looking into the mirrors and he's posing and it uh, gets a bit embarrassing at times for him. Quickest, um, Sean Maitland, uh, when you watch him going through the speed gates and the speed training, doesn't look like he's trying really hard but he's, he's very technically very good at, uh, and obviously Shuggy is a, is a speed coach so nah, he's, uh, he works closely with Sean and works closely with the, the backs so uh, nah, he, he's definitely the quickest. Best mates, I'll probably uh, I'm quite friendly with all the boys. I spend a lot of time with Hoggy, Henry, uh, Peter Horn, uh, Chris Bizarro, Ryan Wilson, uh, kind of DTH as well uh, with the, the two dogs. Uh, so nah, it's, there's uh, you don't really tend to spend uh, a lot of time with the, the one guy. We're, we're a tight knit squad, so you kind of get on with everyone, and it's uh, you just drop. People are texting if they're keen to meet up for lunch, they're keen to come up to David Lloyd to do a bit of pool recovery and grab a bit of bite to eat. Uh, it's quite an open squad that way. This week it was announced that Doogie Hall would be retiring from rugby at the end of the season and Shade Monroe and John Welsh would also be leaving the club in the summer. And we caught up with Doogie to look back on his career. So Dougie, you've announced your retirement at the end of the season. What was the thinking behind that decision? 
I think it was about time. I've had a great career and I think it was time to move on to new challenges. Um, it must be an emotional time with the career coming to an end, considering you've been about for so long. I think I think that it is emotional. You know, it's something rugby's been a huge part of my life, and I'll miss it. But it's also been a long time that I've been doing it, so I've got no regrets. I've I've managed to play for a long time, a lot longer than a lot of my friends have managed, and uh, I'm looking forward to, as I said, new challenges. Looking back, what would you say the highlights of your playing career? I think definitely getting into the final of the Guinness Pro 12 last year. Um, Beating England and France for Scotland uh, were highlights. Um, and I'd say also, probably controversially, uh, getting to the quarter-final at Heineken Cup with Edinburgh. And what would you say the best game you've played in for Glasgow? <sighs> there's been there's been so many, especially in recent years, but the one that sticks out, probably because we weren't as consistently a good team back then, was when we beat Toulouse away from home. Um, that was a fantastic game, and I just remember the feeling from that was amazing. You've obviously played alongside some great players, especially at Warriors. Who are the sort of standouts for you? Oh, uh, too many to mention, really. I mean, I think the beauty of playing for the Warriors has been that we've got so many good players, and yet everyone's so humble. I think we go about it as a team philosophy, and no matter how good the player may be, he sort of approaches it from team first. So uh, I wouldn't want to single anyone out, but it's just a team effort. And you've been at Glasgow since 2007. There's been a real rise in the sort of growth of the club since then. You must be delighted to see that progression. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I remember the, the dark days when we had nothing to play for by the middle of the season, and slowly but surely we've built on our successes and we've we've worked really hard to build a, a winning culture at Glasgow, and that's something I'm very proud of, and it's something I look forward to the guys continuing after I've left. Don't forget, Warriors HQ, your official midweek show, is available every Wednesday evening at 5pm on Glasgow Warriors TV at youtube.com forward slash Glasgow Warriors.